took my love and I took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills until the landslide brought me down. Ah, Mino Giga Jabe. Good morning. Welcome to Quitting Weed number four, I think. My name is Michael Lyons, and I decided to quit weed on Monday. And today is Saturday, July 22nd, maybe? Oh, weird. If today is the 22nd, it marks the 12 year anniversary of when my grandmother became a spirit. Well, she was a spirit, I guess, but my grandmother passed away and started her journey is the way we <laughs> talk about it in Indian circles. Oh, she started her journey. How do you start a journey 12 years ago? I mean, she must have completed it by now. How you doing, Grandma? What's heaven like? Is it anything like <laughs> getting high? <laughs> so, um, if you haven't seen the other channels or the other shows, t today marks day six. Yeah, today is a sixth day without weed after 30 years of smoking weed almost every day. And I discovered it, it was much more difficult than I thought it was gonna be, emotionally. Um, so this video diary is just me posting short updates on my progress. I still haven't smoked. Every day it's getting a little better. It doesn't mean I'm not still depressed. But, uh, I think I'm getting better. So, I wanted to drop in and, and, and I also, in all sincerity or humility or whatever, I have to say thank you. I don't want these videos to, to be me starting each day tearing up over how sweet people have been, but uh, I really appreciate your, your comments of support. Um, and it, it does help. So, today I'm just gonna, I think yesterday I talked about some of the symptoms. If you've ever given up weed, after smoking for 30 years, for three decades, you might have had a similar experience of depression, anxiety, uh, what do they call that when you can't sleep, insomnia? I mean, I can sleep, but I can only sleep for a couple hours at a time and then I wake up. Nightmares and stuff like that, chills. Uh, but a little less every day. I had my last, I, I finished off my bag of weed on Monday morning because that's how I, I lived my life. I'd wake up, have coffee, cigarettes, and smoke weed. You know, no matter what. I smoked weed before work. <laughs> I remember I used to be, I used to be the Indian education director of a school here in northern Minnesota. And uh, it was a good experience getting to know the kids. They actually, I had them call me Mr. Lyons. You know how these current high school teachers want to be friends with their students and students 
students don't call teachers Mr. and Mrs. anymore. You know, they're afraid of misgendering. But I remember on my first day at, at Walker School, I was like, hey, you guys, my name is Michael Lyons, but will you call me Mr. Lyons? Because, you know, I'm not really a teacher. I was the Ojibwe in, instructor or whatever. But I don't have a teaching license and all that. Uh, but it would help me look like you guys respected me if the other teachers saw that you called me Mr. Lyons. And they were cool. They all started calling me Mr. Lyons. But very quickly, Mr. Lyons would get questions like, uh, are you high, Mr. Lyons? <laughs> I'm like, what? Come on. Me? What a question. But I wouldn't lie and I wouldn't tell the truth. I just wouldn't answer the question. But they could tell. Because all these kids were pot smokers. You know? And uh, it didn't matter if I was going to go to work, go to church, go out for a walk, do my podcast, draw cartoons, anything. I, it started with getting high. And like a lot of you already know, I mean, we... When you first start smoking weed, it's a totally different experience than when you start work smoking it every day. Back in the days of the grandfathers in the 90s, when I was in college, I started smoking weed. And I was in my like mid to late 20s. I can't even blame being like, oh, I was a young kid and I got messed up with drugs. No, I was a fully grown adult. When, I mean, the problem was I was already an alcoholic. So, when I started smoking pot, I started drinking less. And I thought, hey, that's great. You know, here I can still get messed up, but there's no hangover. It's actually cheaper than drinking beer every night. And, uh... And I also, I, I got along with the uh, community, you know, the hippies and poets. <laughs> uh, and so we just suited me, my personality. It seemed to help with creativity, focus, you know, all the uh, stereotypes of weed I learned were stupid. It doesn't make you dumb and non-motivated, if you're an artist or a musician at least. Maybe if you're, I don't know. But, you know, fell in love with weed and uh, then became dependent on it and lived my life, you know, chasing, you know, how to, how to get weed how to get stoned, and I went through great lengths. I remember one time I was living in Duluth about 20 years ago, and weed was hard to come by. You'd have to make friends with just low lowlifes. You know, you go to the scary part of town over in, uh, they call it West Duluth, you go to the the creepy bars. There, there was a, a bar in Duluth called uh, Come On In or something like that. And he walked in there as like a... I don't know. But at one moment I found myself sitting in the back of this tiny little car. Like one of those old... What do they call those cars? Like a pacer or whatever? With a pit bull and two scary drug dealers. He had to go through all kinds of trouble just to get a bag of weed and it seemed very illegal and stuff. One time I even walked in sandals. It had to be five miles away to this trailer park to get my bag of weed and five miles back. I mean, it took me hours. By the time I got home, there were toll prints in my new sandals. But I didn't care. I would go, I would do anything to get weed. And I still didn't consider it, oh, I'm not, I'm not addicted. I choose to smoke. 
But uh, anyway, I decided recently to finally quit pot because I had become so depressed and full of anxiety and I felt like weed was actually making it worse. And I think it was. Even though I have all these withdrawal symptoms, which are lightening by the moment, a little bit all the time. It's been six days later and I really do feel like I've gotten over the worst of it. You know, I'm, I, yesterday I, I was tempted to relapse. I went for a walk and I was like, I'm gonna go get some gummies. I'll, 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 eat, it, I'll eat, eat one of those, you know, gummies and get a bag of it. And then I can still come on here and say, hey guys, I still haven't smoked any weed. Whew, good for me. And you wouldn't know that actually he's, well, yeah, he didn't smoke any, but he's eating, you know, whatever. But I didn't. And I'm not gonna today either. I'm, I'm gonna just do the one day at a time thing and see how it goes. So, I don't know, maybe I'll leave it at that. I know this isn't a very entertaining video or anything, but I just wanted you guys to let you know that I'm doing okay. Yesterday I, I got on here and I just started, <laughs> I got all frustrated and I think I cried. I'm not ashamed to cry. David Bowie once said, when he was a, like Ziggy Stardust back in the 70s, he was famous for crying at the drop of a hat. And he said, a lot of artists cry easily. It's nothing to be ashamed about. I remember hearing that when I was like 14. I was like, really? Because that's me. I cry all the time. And I wasn't even the most unhappy person. I just, you know, just wore my heart on my sleeves. Uh, since quitting weed this last week, you know, one of the withdrawal symptoms they say, and I've noticed, is you lose emotional regulation. I'm like a woman on her period. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm like a woman on her moon. You ever notice that how Indians, they always, they have these wonderful expressions like, oh, she's on her moon. You know, once a month it comes around. It's like, really? Your wife is uh, Neil Armstrong? <laughs> no. um, but I'm doing okay. And uh, these video diaries are to let you guys know how I'm doing. I want to remember what it was like in the future for myself. And I also want to hold myself accountable. I'll feel like a liar or actually, you know what? If I can't do this, if I fail, I'll be honest with you and tell you, yeah, I failed. But I don't, I don't want to be that guy. So, all right, let's call this uh, update. Chimi Gwetch for your kind words of support. Thank you so much. You guys know who you are. Gizagain. See, I can't, I can't regulate my emotions. I just said I love you in the Ghibli, and I do. And I will see you again. Gigawabamin. Minawa.